Welcome guys to another Profile Tree Wix tutorial. So today we're going to be going through a crash course using the website builder Wix. So we'll go ahead and get started. So right in front of us, uh, it'll be asking you which platform you want to use. So this is the initial start to using the Wix website builder. Uh, you'll get this screen directly after you've signed up or even logged in. So we'll go ahead and choose a platform here. Now, of course, there are two platforms to choose from, uh, which we have Wix and Editor X. Now, preferably for whoever's starting off using Wix, I would more recommend to use the Wix Editor tool. Or if you consider yourself to be a little bit more professional and would have more knowledge on background building with using Wix Editor, by all means, use Editor X. But just for the purpose of the video, we're going to go and jump into Wix. Okay, guys, so now it'll be asking us what sort of website we want to create. So this is depending on what business you're running or even what sort of regular site you're creating. Now, be it e-commerce or non-e-commerce, there are different templates to choose from. So if I go ahead and create a, let's say, a shopping website or maybe even to do with a fashion blog. As you can see, we've got a list of different websites available for us or different categories. So we've got there fashion blog, beauty and fashion blog, fashion video blog, plus size fashion blog. So of course I can keep listing them on, but there are several different blogs. So for the meantime, uh, for what we've written down, which is fashion blog, I'm going to go and select the first one there and then click next. Now our next page is going to ask us what we would like to call our website. So thankfully we can change it at any time. So for the meantime, I'm just going to give it a random name and select next. So it'll ask us what we want to add to our website. So these are all the different recommendations, of course, and these are all listed within the Wix market, uh, app market. So uh, since we are creating a fashion blog, of course, it's built in a blog app for us straight away. Now we can choose to add a chat box, some forms, even an online store, bookings, events, a portfolio. I can keep listing uh the different apps there but they're they're all there for you so of course depending on your website that you're building uh you may want to consider and clicking on some of these for your website but for the meantime i'm going to go ahead and unselect the chat box as i'll not need it for my fashion blog and i'm going to go ahead and select next Now that we've pretty much jumped into one of the final pages uh, before creating our website. So it'll ask us again whether we want to create a website using the Wix Editor, the Editor X, or Wix ADI. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and show you the different website builder platforms available on Wix. And then I'll let you guys decide which one you want to use. So starting off. Uh, this would be more ideal for anyone that's just starting off creating their first website or even those who aren't too technically minded and would like to just build a website straight away. Then I would recommend to use Wix ADI. So this is the acronym for Artificial Design Intelligence. And as it says there, it'll ask you to answer a few questions to get a website instantly generated for you. We'll go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you what I'm meaning. So of course, once we click on the Wix ADI, it'll give us a loading page. And what we'll show on the next screen is a review and edit. So this is pretty much the information that we would like to put in. So if we already have a logo for the business, by all means, add the logo in. And of course, this is the time as well. If we would like to change the name of the website, we can go ahead and do so. As you can see, you're able to enter your email address, the location 
of a physical store. Now, of course, if you don't have an address, you don't need to add it in, especially if you are purely just an online website. Then, of course, you have the option to add your phone number and some social media accounts. So we'll go ahead as we don't have any information based on this website. I'm going to go and click skip. Now, the next page, it'll ask us what theme we would like to use. Now, of course, I have six different options here. This wouldn't be the same for yourselves. So if you are creating a Wix ADI website, there are other options apart, um, apart from the ones that I have. So of course I have Serene, Grand, Minimal, Retro, Fuse and Prestige. Now this, uh, as I said, you will have different other themes to choose from. It's just depending on what's generated. So what I'm gonna do is I shall click Grand and this is a French countryside elegant sort of design. Anyway, I'll go ahead and select Next. Now, it's going to, as it says there, it's preparing some homepage designs, three different layouts of the homepage. So, our first one here, it's more of a dark navy blue, and we have pretty much everything we would need in a website. So, we've got our header, we've got a section, we've got a contact form, even have a location, and of course, our footer. Next, if you don't like that design, you could choose the second design here, which is also having a header, a hero section, but by the looks of this one, it has a slideshow, a little bit about the company, a contact form, and a footer. Now lastly, if you don't like the second option, you could choose with this one here, which has the header, it has our section, uh, our contact section, even a location, along with a footer. Now depending on what design you like, you can go ahead and choose one of the templates or you could choose to skip, which will give you a completely blank template. And this is where you can pretty much uh, set off and do your own thing. Now, since uh, the ADI is a little bit more basic, uh, for those looking at something a little bit more advanced, I'm gonna go ahead and show you another platform called Editor X. So we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into that platform. Okay, so we're back at the screen that we were for the options. I'm gonna go ahead and select the Editor X. And before we jump into it, as it states, it has Design Fluid Sites with CSS Grid, Flexbox Layouts, and Custom Breakpoints. Now, depending on how uh, technical you are with creating a website, by all means, use this platform. You can do some coding on it as well using Velo Code. Anyway, these are some of the options that you have. Now you can start off with a blank canvas or use some of the default options that Wix have created themselves. Now these are all pretty uh, fluid with designs and it is fairly modernized. So depending on how much you can play about with it and tamper with it, by all means use Editor X. So these are of course some of the designs that they show. And they are a little bit more complex. So I'll go ahead and show you what this looks. So now that we've loaded into the website itself, as you can see, we've got a video background along with a whole uh, pretty much background there with a blended header and a hero section. And we even have very fluid designs, as you can see with a lot of animation use as well. The only thing to consider about using Editor X, so it's a great platform, especially if you wanna be a little bit more technical with your designs. However, do take into consideration within the pricing of Editor X. There is a big difference with how much you will pay for your monthly or your annual payments on the website. But you do have more benefits using Editor X, so it's just a little bit of a note for you to understand pretty much that Editor X is a little bit more expensive than the Wix editor. Anyway, uh, going back to the start again, uh, if you don't fancy any of the templates that Wix has to offer, of course you can use the wireframes. And some of the wireframes here are pretty much websites that have been, been built, but 
websites with placeholders instead of actual content. So this is something that you may be wanting to start off with, especially if you're just a little bit lost with design, by all means use some of the wireframes that they have. Now that we've discussed the Editor X and Wix ADI, I want to go ahead and jump into our final platform, which is the Wix Editor. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll jump into the Wix Editor and we'll go ahead and view the different areas and parts and just generally give you a crash course on how to use the Wix Editor. So here we are, uh, we've, of course, uh, since we have selected a fashion blog, uh, it'll ask us whether we want to use some of the templates that are available. Now, with the results of it being fashion blog, it actually has listed us the exact category that we need to be at. So as you can see, there are a couple of different ones available to us. And we've even got one for beauty blogs, personal blogs, and the list goes on all the way up to about page five. So this is where you can pretty much choose the design that you want to pick. So just moving on, as you can see with page five, and there's even one for a food blog, book blog, and music blog and podcast. Now, if you do decide that you do not want to use any of the default templates that Wix have created, you can go ahead and select the blank templates instead. Now, just like the wireframes on Editor X, this works with the same principles. So, you can create a website from scratch, you could do the minimal layout, you could do a classic layout, one page layout, strip header, and so on. And it goes all the way down to an, an overlapping layout. Now, this is great, especially if you are creating, say, a brochure, and you don't want a multiple page website, what would you use? You would go ahead and select the one page layout. Now, if you are creating a multiple page website, you can, of course, click the other templates available to us, or if you purely want to create your own design and get a little bit creative, by all means, you could start the from scratch. Now, uh, if you are, of course, having different websites, e-commerce websites or brochure or portfolio websites, there are other options available as well. So if we select the business and services, as you can see, they've got different areas there health and wellness, beauty and hair, fashion and style, travel and tourism, restaurants and food, landing pages, and even a professional CV. And you even have ones for online store, of course, and then that, that all categorizes in one area. If you, want to, uh, if you do a little bit of uh, creativity sort of lifestyle, then you've got one for photography, design, music, creative arts, video, portfolio, and CV. Now for community ones, of course, we've got education, communities, and events. So it covers pretty much any category that you want to choose from. Uh, it's pretty much here, which is great, uh, especially if you're stuck for some design, then by all means, use the templates. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to go ahead and select a blank template, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a website based of using a website from scratch. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get right into this one. So now that we've loaded onto the preview screen uh, or the editor screen, so as you can see, it even gives us a layout option pretty much just to give us a little preview of some of the parts that we'll be using. So on the left side there, we've got add elements, add section, pages and menu, site design, add apps, my business, media, and content manager. Now. Uh, these are, of course, all the important parts the, uh, to build our actual website. And I'll give you guys the basics, of course, on creating a header, our section here, and of course, our footer. Now, um, up here on the top left, from where you can see page, uh, we're currently now on the home page. And this is the only page that we have on the website so far. So I'll also give you a guide on how to create some sub pages, pages, and even some anchor, anchored pages. Uh, 
And what's great about this, so we'll just click off that now. Uh, we have two different options within optimization. So of course we've got the desktop version and the mobile option. And then on our top left here, this is where we can go ahead and publish the website if we wanted to, or go to the dashboard. And of course the dashboard is, as it says there, where we would manage your business apps, settings, SEO, anything like that. And of course, uh, I was explaining, uh, explaining earlier on with the editor X that you, it uses Velo uh, coding as well. Well, we also have a developer mode on Wix editor and it is the Velo developer mode. And this is where we could start using Node.js if you're familiar with that uh, coding language. And there is also Velo APIs. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, area to be at. If, especially if you wanted to create some custom code, by all means use it. And then, of course, you can choose to uh, hire a professional, but we'll not be doing that if we we're going to create our website. Now, another thing to note as well is on the top right there, we've got an undo and redo button, which is very handy for if we make some mistakes or we've deleted things that we didn't want to delete, then we can undo and redo them. Uh, we can also zoom out to 50, so just to give a perspective of how the website looks. And we can, of course, close back in. Now, some of these tools are already integrated in. So you'll notice that some of these are already ticked as soon as I open this. So what's already ticked is the grid lines and snapped objects, which I will explain during the tutorial. Of course, we have our toolbar and layers and rulers and Rulers, uh, I don't really find it handy for myself, but it may be handy for other people. Uh, helps you, of course, navigate where you would need to be, but that's why we have the snap to objects anyway. But it's also always very handy to have an extra tool, um, even if it is a little bit overkill, no problem. Now, you'll have your layers as well. So, of course, at the minute for our untitled section here, uh, we have currently no elements on this, meaning that there's no layers. I'll of course give you a step-by-step -step progress on what it would look like if you have different layers on a section. Lastly, of course, we would have our toolbar. And our toolbar is very, very handy, especially if you want to create some adjustments. So for example, this section here already sits at around 500 for its height. And for default, it's sitting at 980 PX for its width. Now, of course, we don't need to position that with X, Y, uh, as we don't need or don't have pretty much anywhere else for this section to go. And of course, this is where we can start duplicating uh, our sections. So just by one simple click, I can go ahead and duplicate the section. And I can also copy a section and paste it. So if I click copy, and then I can go ahead and control V and it would paste it for me. Or you can select the option here for the paste. But of course, since I don't need three other sections, I can go ahead and undo some of my work. And I'm now back to a header, a section, and a footer. Okay. So what I always like to do first is start off with the hero section or this main um, landing area for our visitors and customers. Now what's really most important is you would like to always name the section. So at the minute it's called untitled, but I'm gonna name it hero section. And you can also section the URL as well, but we'll not worry about that. So what's next here is since we are designing this specific section, what I wanna go ahead and do is add an element and I'm going to add a strip. Now, what's handy about the strip is not only does it make your site a little bit more responsive, especially if you're optimizing from a tablet to a mobile device or even the desktop device itself. Even if you shrink the screen, it'll always give the uh, right perspective for its elements. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that anyway. So what I like to do is I move, I'll move the strip up here. And since this is currently my full screen, I want to find out what exactly the screen is all the way down to my bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click on tools. 
then I'm going to select my section here, select tools again and go to toolbar, go to 500 and see and play about with it here. So it looks like it's around 600, but I'll reduce the amount to say around 580. So that may be a little bit better, maybe 560. Okay, so on the dot there, it's around 560. So that means I can change my strip to 560 as well. So that'll be just within that page. Now, what's great about having a strip as well is that you can go ahead and select some uh, columns. So say I do want a column, I can go ahead and select layout, then select column. And now I have two different areas here, column one and column two. Now, depending on the actual site design on how I want to build it, I'm going to go ahead and add a, another column here. So I'm going to select column and add another column. And what I want to do is I want to reduce this. So th this is how I have it imagined in my head. So I'll have my social media bar on my right side, and then I'll have some content within the middle, and then I'll have some content on the left side. This is where I'll have my slider. For this one, I'll just have a background. And then for this one, I'll have, of course, as I said, the social media. Now, I don't want it proportioned like this. I want it more proportionate uh, with, within different numbers and not evenly. So the way to do that is since we're already clicked on one, so you select um, column, select layout or manage columns, and then we'll just ex uh, exit out of the manage columns. Now you'll get the part where it's now gray, this means that you're now doing it right. We'll go ahead and select layout and it will give us a completely different view or menu item, which is strip layout. So these are the different proportions for the column. Now I wanna go ahead and select for number three at 10%. And that automatically does everything for me. So this is also a brand new feature. Uh, previously you had to drag the part about, but now we don't need to do that. Uh, for the first strip, I'm going to want to have that as 60%. So I'm going to change that number completely and have that as six and then zero. 60% and now that is at, that should be at 30%. Let's see if I can change that to 30%. And of course that is at 9%. That should have been 10%. Let's see if I can adjust this. Okay, so it looks like they have made it a little bit different. So it looks like it's uh, around 99% instead of the 100. See if I do this, maybe reverse the layout and then change my figure here to 60%. I'm going to just even out the proportion here to 60% and then I'll bring this to 40% and have my layout here as 10%. Okay, so a little bit of an error by the looks of things. So of course they haven't exactly mastered the use of the percentages here by the looks of things. So we've got 60, 30 and 10%. So that's a full 100. Now we'll go ahead and exit out of this. We'll just make sure everything is correct. And so everything's uh, where it should be at. I'm happy with the proportion size on my first column, second column and my third column. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the background color of this. So this is where we can add some background color, of course, and I can change it to either a solid color. I can change that to an image or even a video. So uh, depending on what design you're going for with the site, either be it a blog site or a um, e-commerce site, of course, there are different potentials to how you wanna create it. Uh, for the meantime, I will actually give it a color. and I'll probably give it a more of a peach color. So I'll go ahead and select add and try to find that 
peach color. Or, so, or of clues. We'll go for pink then. Okay, and then for this background, I'm going to go ahead and change it to a solid black background. And then I'm happy enough to leave this white. Now, there are different elements which we're going to start adding to now. So we're, we'll move on now to the elements. So this is very important. Of course, this is where we would go ahead and add our different pieces and different options within our website. Now, what I want to do is create a slider. So I'm just going to simply use the editor um, or the search bar to find a slider for me. Now, if I select that, it says here that I would need to add the content manager up first. So the way to do that is I'm just going to go ahead and select get started. So I'll go here to add ups. And if I just search up content manager, or this should be it, sorry. Uh, so here is our content manager. Of course, we can create collections, dynamic pages. I'm going to go ahead and add that to the site. So wait for that to load. Okay, so now that our content manager is now added to our site, what we need to do is go back to our add elements and this is when we can start adding the slider in. So just go to the search and then insert our slider. Uh, let me see if I could actually try to find the, there we are. So what we're looking for actually is slider galleries. So that's my apologies as well. So um, we'll select here and then we'll attach that to our area. See if we could stretch it out to full width. Or just a, so it does take a little bit of adjustment, of course, until you can get it right. And see, so we're in there. And I'll just go ahead and preview this site just to make sure everything looks okay. So just a little bit of tampering about. Okay, so I've gone ahead and adjusted the slider there. So that's now all aligned properly. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and change the images on this as well. So we want to go for something a little uh, more to do with the fashion blog. So I'm just going to delete some of these. And of course you can replace the images if you want to. So we'll go to unsplash and then now what's great about these images, uh, they are non-copyright and they are pretty much what, what they have uploaded. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add in three different images on after that as well, I'll show you how to modify the slider. And yeah, we'll continue on the video. Okay, so hopefully those images have changed. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and preview them. So that is now a slider that is working. But as you can see, uh, I have text under here as well that I don't want. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that up. You can see how easy it is to change things about as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select the design. See, okay, I'm happy enough with the design. So we'll just change the settings here. So I want to remove the navigation arrows as well. And we'll have it to auto crop. And then for the transition, so it'll last about a second from the to the right okay and then with the images as well i'm just gonna delete the text and i'm gonna also delete the let's see so open open within pop-up and i'm gonna say nothing happens so we'll go ahead and preview this and just give it a overview. I want to try to get rid of this bottom area. 
Okay, so we want to get rid of that little white box. So I'm going to go to design, customize the design and with an over. Okay, so at the minute it is now at 0% and same applies for the text box and the navigation arrows. So I'm happy enough with that. And no title font, which is what we want. We've got the descriptions as well. So that's all okay. There's a shadow. We'll not apply a shadow as we're not needing that. We've got a border here and I'll just reduce that down to 0%. So then, okay, happy enough with how that looks. And with the spacing is okay. So now uh, if I go ahead and select preview, as you can see, nothing comes up. So I'm now happy enough with how that's looking. And so the only thing to do now is to just check out to see if this will then change my slider. So auto plays on loading. Okay, so pretty much just preview that now. Uh, so within two seconds, hopefully this does change. Okay, so that's now changing from picture to picture. So that's just how to make a sort of a fluid design as well. And what I now want to do is have the header matching with the hero section. But I'm going to go ahead and touch up and finish up the rest of the site just before moving on. So with this image here, what I want to do is I want to darken the opacity of this. So let's see. So fill color and opacity. What I want to do is darken the image. So we'll go ahead and inspect the image. Of course, there are other ways to do this. Uh, what I will actually do is I'm going to add another slider here, but this time I'm just going to reduce the sizing of it and increase that size there, have it listed here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is touch up the rest of the site and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the header. Okay, so what I've done here is I've went ahead and used something a little bit different, which is the box slider. So if we go ahead and preview this and just have a look at how the website's now looking. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a uh, twist with how it works. As you can see. But now what I need to do, so it's um, going along the same speed. I'm going to check out the actual settings and see that the slide is around five seconds. So I want to sort of create the same one for the slide deck here, which is around five seconds as well. So now if I go ahead and preview this, this all should align around the same time. So we did have a small little delay there so what we could do is uh within the time there this is when we start playing about with it a little bit so we'll try three seconds and we'll try to preview that so it looks like what well, it'll be better as is around four seconds so it's pretty much just playing around with it just seeing what sort of design that you can create from it and to add the little other effects that I created, uh, all I had to use was the animation. Now with the animation as well, you can customize them to uh, what sort of duration you want it to be. So it's fairly easy enough to do. So if, of course, when you start previewing things together and lining everything up, it starts looking more like a website. So as you can see, five seconds suits this area and four seconds suits the slider. So that's pretty much how it's looking so far. We'll go ahead and focus now our attention towards the header. So before I get started, of course, now that I have a hero section, if you do want other sections within your page, you can add them in like so, and you can have things like about, uh, like this, 
and pretty much just join everything together. So of course I would like a white background within that area and I can go ahead and do so, easy enough. And have this area bordered as well. And I can have this the same as that little button here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and remove this one. And add that in. Okay, so of course you do want to tie everything in together. And what I'm going to do is change the uh, column background for this. And we'll go, go ahead and look for a brand name. Okay, let's see. Um, Unsplash seems to be using a lot more of the images as well of like real items since they are created by uh, photographers. So let's see. Um, clothing brand. And media from works if you want to use that. Those are all non-copyright images. Of course, you have to take credit for whoever created the images here for us. So something like that. Okay. And of course, uh, that's what's great about these little sections. Uh, they all are pretty much pre-made and ready to go. And of course, you can add some testimonials. You can have contact forms, like even areas for, about your team. As you can see, there's one about the team. And I can go ahead and insert that in. And I'm also going to show you the importance of having the sections named. So of course this is our little section here and you can see how easy it is to change images and on top of that as well when you are changing some fonts or text you can ch easily change the sizing using the font size here and of course I can revert back if I'm not happy with the font size and on top of that as well I can go ahead and change the actual fonts itself to suit the website. Now of course if I don't like any of the fonts available to me I can go ahead and change each of the fonts uh, for any uploaded fonts. Now, of course, these are some of the fonts that are uploaded. And they all go from Comforto Regular all the way up to ret Retro Signature. So these are the other ones that I've created for other websites as well. So, of course, this is my most favorite there. So if I search up uh, Comfort Regular or Comforto Regular or Comforto Regular, sorry, that will come up with the same font. Of course, I can't choose to remove that if I'm not happy enough with it. So it is a very, very easy website builder, as you, uh, as you guys can see. Now, if I want to add some social media, as you can see here from the bottom, all I would need to do is go to the element section, select on social, and I can go ahead and click and drag and drop. And I can add these to anything like such as this repeater. And if I do add it to a repeater, it re of course repeats it for any of the other sections. So things like that. So now that we've got pretty much the foundation of our sections for each of the, uh, for this website, sorry. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and focus on the header and also our footer and see what sort of designs that we can come up with. So I'm going to go ahead and add some elements in. Now, of course, uh, for me to have different columns, just like I do here with the actual hero section, I'm going to go ahead and add a strip. So I'll just go to classic and select on strip. And now of course, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag that up a little bit. And I'm going to use my toolbar here to help me resize this. So I'm going to click at it around, let's just say 100. And to get rid of any of the white spacing, of course, uh, that's easy enough to do. Instead of clicking and dragging up, I'm just going to go ahead and select a double click on that. So just double click this and that'll all go away. Now, of course, I want to match it and tie it in with our hero section. So the way to do that is for changing the columns. Of course, I'm going to have a bunch of different layouts. 
So what I want to do is manage my column one more time and make sure I have another column. Okay, so now that I have three columns, I'm going to change the layout proportion. So I'm going to do it by 20, 20, and 60. And since my first one here is 60, I'm going to go ahead and reverse the layout. So now it becomes 60, 20, 20. All that's left for me to do now is manage the actual layout for my area here. So again, select co uh, manage columns and then select layout. And then what I want to do is change this part here to 30% or another way of doing it is just by dragging. Okay, so 60, 30 and 10%. And just like with the other ones, I'm going to go ahead and change the column background for this area here, which is the header and change the color of it to that same colored pink. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this background here to color black as well. So change the column, column, column background to a color black like so. And then now that we have pretty much that layout there, you can see how it's all blending in together. I am now going to go and add a logo. And on top of that as well, I'm going to add my uh, menu item. So of course, this is where you would add uh, your logo here. You would just have it spaced around here. Uh, we'll get rid of that white spacing there. So just by double clicking. So you could just pretend that, that is the logo for this website. There are other ways to create it using the Wix logo make maker, or of course, any other uh, development tool such as Photoshop. Uh, by all means, fire away and create your own. So what I want to do here is I'm going to add a menu and header. So there are a couple of different options there. I'm just going to select on one, which is this one, and that's our home. And of course, now what I want to do is add some pages. So I'm going to have one for about me and the team. And I'll also have a contact form. I almost forgot that. So just select this, select on contact, and then I'm going to add a contact form. So this will, uh, would suit it enough. I'm happy enough with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this design and then this should apply it onto my website. So that ties in with the website as well. Of course, a little bit of modification will come a long way. I'll just go ahead and delete that. So we have our three different areas within our website. Now what I want to do is create some pages. Now, of course, what you can do since uh, we already have a logo, I'm going to uh, go ahead and hide the home. Now, instead of adding pages, since I want to create a one page website, I'm going to go ahead and add a menu item instead. And of course, what I'm going to do is add a section instead, and it's going to be in the home page and it'll be the about me. So I'm going to go ahead and click done and I'm just going to say about us. And then I'm going to do another menu item, this time with a section or anchor. And I'm going to go ahead and do the team. So team. And lastly, we've got our contact form. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same for that one. Select done and then contact. So if you could see the changes as well, you're looking above there where it has contact team and about us. Now, if you want to rearrange it, it's easy enough. It's just about dragging and dropping. Another option as well is by if you're wanting to create sub pages, all you need to do is hold, drag and bring to the right. And it'll give this L shape as well or our right angle. You can also uh, determine by doing uh, the sub page or main page uh, by clicking on the three little uh, dots there within the circle. Now you may be wondering as well now is that we have a slight issue with placement within our horizontal menu. An easy way to fix that is just by dragging and dropping this little area. And now that is fixed. So I'm just going to have it attached to here. And what I want to do is go ahead and design the actual menu item. And of course, if you can't see text, we're going to want to make sure that we actually design the menu item. So just select menu items. And this is where we can start changing the text. 
So just before we proceed, I'm going to want to make sure just to double check what sort of font this is. So it's Poppins semi bold. So I'm going to go back to my menu item, select design, uh, select on the customized menu and then select on the menu items, click on the text and select Poppins bold. Poppins semi bold. So that's it pretty much done. And of course, this is where I can start changing the hover about. I can start changing the background fill, fills, anything like that. It's all pretty much under my control. So I can change the menu items as you can see here. So I can have some background fills. And when you're hovering over it as well, the text color is blue. I can change that to if I want to to the pink color instead and then if it has a current page I can also swap that to pink and then let's just say uh, my regular there it is at the right color of black so if I go ahead and preview that and just take, take a look at how everything is so far so we've created of course our hero section here we've created a part of the header and of course our uh, logo there and then if, of course I select this then I'm able to drop down onto each of the menu for the website so of course there are other options as well for the header since I want to keep it within this area all I need to do is click on more actions with the three little dots there and then change the header scroll settings and there are a list of different options such as scrolls with sight, freezes, disappears and fades out. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, scrolls with sight. So if I preview that my header will now disappear and not go along with me. So I can leave that within the top page. Lastly of course there are other designs that you can do for the footer since we're now going to be working on the footer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing so add elements and this is where I can start adding my text but for the meantime I'm going to add my strip first and just go for a white strip. Perfect. Drag that up a little bit. I want to make this as big as possible. So now in my tools, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the toolbar here to help me out. And I'm going to select it for 450. And I will also do the same for this area. I'm going to change that for 450 for my actual box. Okay. So now that that is all selected, all I need to do is start designing my footer. So how would I go about it? Uh, what I could do is I'm just going to move this section down a little bit, just like so. Just to give it a look there. Okay, happy enough. And I'm going to follow the, uh, so the same principle as I've done with the rest of the site, which is my columns. So manage columns and I'm going to add another column and then change my proportion sizes to 60, reverse the layout and then drag this forward a little bit. Okay. And then what I want to do is change this column background so that it is pink. Okay, and change this column background so that it is black. Okay, and then of course I have this section white. Now this is when of course you could start getting creative where you would put your logo in, you would have your area for, let's just say your menu items of course or you can have a navigation bar here so let's just say i have here let's just add in a map and i could do a full width map or a google map so i'll just select a google map for the meantime since i'm able to adjust and resize that so as you can see i'm able to resize my map And then I can go ahead and pretty much drag that out like so. So there of course is multiple ways on designing the actual website. 
So if I go ahead and preview that, there's my map. Uh, and then I can have my navigation mar uh, bar here. And then on top of that, I can have my social media. Now that is one thing I'm also forgetting from that point, which is the social media. So what I'll do is that's uh, easy enough. Of course, you can add your socials in here. So then I would go to social, select one of these here. And of course you could see that it's aligned as a horizontal menu, uh, but that's easy enough to fix. All we would need to do is select the layout and I can have that as a vertical one there. I can change the spacing out a little bit and I can also proportion my sizes. So it's 35. And then of course, if I drag it here and just find the middle, that's where I can have it set. Like so, so right in the middle. So if I go ahead and preview this and just take a look at how it looks. Okay, so I'm happy enough with how that looks. Now, of course, there are other interesting things that you could do with this uh, login bar. Now I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So what we wanna do here, so we've got column two there, okay. So I'm going to align it so that it hits the point of around here. Now, what I can do here is I can right click on this and pin that to the screen. And I'm going to pin that to the middle here with an offset of around, let's just say uh, around 18. I'll have it at 18 and I can click X and then preview it. And then what's cool about that is that this icon bar follows me all the way. Of course, with a couple of adjustments, then I'll be able to correct it and make it look nice and have it around here. But now pretty much all that's left to do once you're happy with the website, all you need to do is to launch it is just to click publish. And then that website is going to be live pretty much so anyone can see it as it says. So once you get that little tick, you'll get a congratulations light, uh, light pop up here. And then it'll ask you to go view the website. So of course you select website, view website, and then this is where I can see the real deal. Of course, there's my maps, there's meet the team and everything about it as well works perfectly fine. As you can see. So going back to the editor of course so that's how you would publish the website and just to push further on with this video uh, I'm going to show you guys how to have your SEO and also just get into the dashboard so pretty much all you need to do to do there is click site and then my dashboard and then this is where you'd, you'd pretty much be able to see the background or pretty much the brains of your website so this is where all the magic would happen for your uh, website because you would need the website to rank uh, or have, you know, some traffic flow onto it. This is where you can create blog posts, add custom domains, you know, SEO, anything like that. So there's just a couple of options there on the left side. So if you just need to navigate around it, you can also choose to rename the website if you want. And what's great about this as well is that you can go ahead and rebuild this website on Editor X. So that's something you may want to consider if you don't want to keep it as a uh, Wix editor platform, but you want to build it on Editor X, by all means, you can rebuild it on Editor X. Uh, but yes, guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, there we've uh, showcased how to pretty much look at the different platforms, how to create parts of the website and view like the different areas within the editing tool. And we've also published the website. So pretty much if, um, hopefully this video has helped. If you guys have any questions at all, or I may have missed something, why not leave it in the comment section below and also check out some of our other video tutorials on Wix and hopefully it helps you guide, um, helps you with the website building that you're doing. And of course, let us know in the comment section below on how you get on. Anyway, guys, I'll see you for the next video. Thank you very much.